On the forest side, the bear dune rises at an angle of more than 30 degrees. Across from the dune, a coastal pass leads to the Arcachon Basin. The sandbanks beyond are the reserve from which the winds lift the sand and drop it onto the dune, constantly replenishing it. The dune moves slowly inland, covering the trees as it goes. One by one, they disappear, till the dune will uncover them centuries later. Just before the continental tip, one finds another dune, at Doniana. Plant life here is different, as is the size of the dune. The Doniana dune measures only 34 meters in length. But as for the rest, the dunes at Paila and Doniana are exactly alike, the same threat to the forest the same ocean wind that carries the sand and pushes the dune forward. The dune at Danyana, however, is incredibly mobile. It moves five to six meters per year. We're back at the Atlantic Ocean, which forms the entire western limit of the European continent, but we're much further to the north in Ireland. The combat here between the sea and yet another giant is incredibly violent. Standing before the sea are the cliffs of Mohair. Frequent landslides prove that the ocean's relentless assaults are slowly weakening the cliff's rock foundations. These sheer cliffs rise to a stunning 200 meters above sea level. The O'Brien Tower was built in the 19th century at the highest point. Cows graze above the eight kilometer stretch of cliffs apparently unaware of the clash of the titans going on below. The wind rushes into the rifts. Then, hitting the cliffs, it climbs the steep walls. Seagulls use the updrafts like a custom-made elevator and build their nests midway up the face of the cliff. Farther to the north, the coastline rises even higher. The Faroe Islands have the highest cliffs in Europe. The cliffs of Sleeve League. Their majestic walls seem to have been chosen by nature as a palette for blending all the colors of the world's landscapes.
rises over 600 meters above sea level, like the prow of an enormous ship sailing to conquer the immense ocean. Most seagulls aren't concerned with learning flying techniques, except as a means for leaving shore to search for food. Jonathan Livingston Seagull would do without, well beyond the faraway cliffs, alone the rest of his days. Never abandoning his complete mastery of himself and climbing swiftly, he passed through the thick ocean fogs, flying above them in skies bathed in blinding clarity. <laughs> 